Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, I want to talk a little bit about what is affine or more precisely, what is an affine space. Um, what it will be all about is exactly this one. I lost my origin, so let me try to explain. So let's say you have R2, right? Here's R2 and certainly R2 has a fixed point. So let me just first copy R2. So here's R2 again, and give it a different color, whatever. Okay, um, in R2, you certainly have one distinguished point. All other points are kind of the same, right? It's up to scaling. Um, they are all the same anyway, uh, in some sense, at least at, as, as long as they lie on certain lines, but there's not really a distinguished point, except the origin. The origin, the, the zero is certainly distinguished. And what linear algebra then is usually doing is it's saying, okay, a linear map is, or a vector space is something that has an origin and the linear map is something that preserves the origin. But why should you do that, right? Why do you have to do that? Here's a perfect example of a linear, of, of something that is still very linear, but it avoids the origin. And that's exactly the idea of, of linear spaces, uh, of affine spaces, so this is affine. This is the notion of an affine line. So affine geometry is basically linear geometry without fixing the origin. And that's kind of a standard idea. I mean, why should I choose an origin? That's like saying my point of view, because I'm standing here, um, that, that's where I am. That's the center of the universe, right? And that's the origin. And my point of view is preferable over all others. That's of course stupid, that's nonsense. And in mathematics, vector spaces are of course not stupid, but fixing the origin seems to be a little bit artificial. And affine theory gets rid of this choice. So let me just jump right into it. Uh, so let me give you an example where everything actually comes from. So I have two lines, I have a line two and I have a line one. They're given in coordinates by those formulas over here. The formulas don't matter so much, but as you can see, they totally avoid the origin, right? And they're really affine maps, affine lines. So affine line, both of them are affine lines. They avoid the origin. Still, the solution to this linear system, system of linear equations here is exactly the intersection point of those affine lines. So affine geometry already studies is kind of the main ingredient for system of linear equations, okay? It's not linear maps, but actually it's affine maps, right? Um, and this also should, might remind you or might tell you that affine geometry is actually older than linear geometry, than linear algebra. Um, not that people called it affine because there was no linear, so there was no distinction necessary. But the thing you see in the background here is basically the Cartesian coordinate system. And this Cartesian coordinate system comes with, well, choice of coordinate vectors, but also with the choice of an origin, right? So there is an origin that comes fixed with this Cartesian coordinate system. But Greeks and certainly other people before them have studied lines uh, without Cartesian coordinates, without any choice of, of an origin. And geometrically speaking, I shouldn't care whether there's an origin or not. I can still stu study lines in their intersections, right? And that's the whole idea of doing something affine. It's just the same as linear, but we don't fix, we don't know Cartesian coordinates, basically. We don't know an, an origin. We don't know a zero. Um, so historically speaking, affine geometry is older than um, let's say linear geometry, linear, linear algebra. But um, strictly speaking, that's not the case because the definition that you, I will show you later of affine lines and affine geometry and affine spaces depends on the notion of vector spaces. People just never coined the name affine before, but actually it's an older study. And as you should see actually in this example, um, you can see it here literally. So, uh, so here is linear. So this is affine, as I said, and this is linear. And the stories run pretty much in parallel, as you can see. Right? Linear and affine geometry run pretty much in parallel. 
Still, FN geometry has certain advantages, namely you haven't chosen uh, origin. It has certain disadvantages, the calculations get a li little bit more cumbersome. But basically, it's, it's what it is. It's, uh, forget the origin. So here's another example. So um, if you want to think about affine spaces, you should think about, right? If you think about vector space, you think about linear maps. If you want to think about affine spaces, you should think about affine maps. And what is a linear map? Well, let's be just identified with a matrix. So I have this matrix, which looks pretty strange, but whatever it is, it, it's this operation. Um, it, it takes this, whatever it is, uh, rectangle and turns it a little bit and um, scales it a little bit, the shearing operation, but it certainly keeps the origin where it is while the affine map on this side, so affine versus linear, um, here's a notation for it. I will explain it. So you have, an, you have a linear part, the green part, which is it, it, in this case, it's just the same operation as before. It, it would put the, uh, the little rectangle down to here and shear it a little bit. But you also have an affine part, which is a red part. And the affine part is just the translation. So affine maps, it's exactly what you think it is because there's no need to fix origin anymore, but they still should still be linear. So affine maps are linear maps plus translations. Okay. And this is a matrix notation for them, which I will come back to later. But basically think of affine maps as being linear maps plus translations. And the whole point of this affine, as I just said, is that you can allow different origins or different viewpoints or different perspectives, whatever you want. And all of them are related in this, in this setup by translation. So let me explain this picture. So I have two points in space, which is the, the, the a black V and the whatever blue W that you see here. And I have two observers. It's you standing in the origin and it's me standing somewhere above here. And we just see those vectors differently. My, my vector look a little bit like this, as you can see in the picture here. Your vectors look a little bit like this. And the addition of your vectors will be some vector that basically goes, um, let me copy this picture, that basically goes, so it's still in red in the picture, it basically goes somewhere, like, somewhere here, while mine, um, goes somewhere down here, right? So we observe different objects from different perspectives. Our vectors look different. Our addition of vectors looks different. Um, but the point is they're related exactly by the translation between you and me. So this translation shows up here down here. So the difference between our perspectives is exactly in this, in this setup, it's pretty easy. It's just the difference between our origins, between our standoff. Um, in general, it's more complicated, right? And if you think about the whole idea of relativity and different coordinate systems are not just related by some translation. It might, might get more complicated. But in, in our little linear algebra toy model, um, everything in affine and non-affine are basically related by translation. However, let me stress again that this is important. So here you can, you, you can allow different viewpoints. And as you can see, our vectors look pretty much different. Right? So mine is much longer than yours, for example. So yours is roughly this length, yeah, and mine is rough, goes like something like here, and it's certainly much longer. Oh, this was a bad picture. Uh, let me make this a little bit longer. So something like that. So different, different perspectives give really different answers to similar questions. Just keep that in mind whenever you work with affine objects. Okay, and then the formal definition looks much more complicated than it actually is. It's a vector space without origin. And that's basically point C. So, okay. And so what, what you have is, well, we have the following. An affine space, that's A, is just an, a set A together with a vector space and an addition operation. And the addition operation satisfies two things you probably will agree on. There's an identity, namely the zero in your vector space. And it should be associative because non-associative things are just very, very scary. And the last one is a crucial one. 
it's called free and transitive. And it basically means that um, V and A are equivalent. They are by in bijection, so they are the same. And A is basically just a, a origin free copy of V. And similarly, you could write down whatever FN maps are. I will try to explain it more carefully in, in, a, in, a, in another video. The point about an affine space here is don't look too much at the abstract definition. In the last thing, what you see is actually basically that V equals A, right? Not quite because one has an origin, the other one doesn't, but all operations of in V, the addition and the scalar multiplication have a um, corresponding operation in A. So they're the same from a certain point. Okay, so let me finish by telling you something nice. And I mean, you can also write down matrices for affine maps. And it's really similarly to what I explained before. So we have this, this uh, linear box and you have the affine box, the red one. And you distinguish them as follows. You draw your matrix. And you make this extra row here, which looks a little bit strange, but you did what you do. Um, you put your, F, uh, your affine part here and you put your linear part here. And the linear part will just be a matrix. It will be just the usual operation, like, like, like a rotation. And the affine part is, is a vector. And this vector is exactly the operation of translation. Okay, So it would translate this thing. Um, from here to here, that's exactly the vector. And that's then the notation for an affine map. That seems pretty, pretty natural, right? You have a translation and you have a, a, a linear map. So the linear map acts on, on V and the translation acts on A. So I should get V in green. So the linear map acts on V and the translation acts on A. And the only reason for this funny notation was this funny extra row here. So what, what, what on earth is going on? is in this notation, um, that's the point, in this notation, composition is matrix multiplication. So that's why you do it. So you can, matrix, multiplying those matrices is composition of affine maps, which is pretty nice because it's the same complexity as uh, the usual linear operation, as it should be because affine geometry, as I just explained, is just linear geometry without a word. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.